Before we get into building out the React sample application with authentication, we have one more item we have to add to Rails in order to have this work in both production and local development environments. And so this will be the last guide where we have to do anything with Rails for this course. And so what we need to do is open up that session initializer. So the session store initializer. So I'm going to go to Vim, config, initializer initializers session store and with this current setup where we have the domain listed this will work perfectly in production so if we deployed this application and we communicated with it even from a local react application this would work perfectly however this if it's being served in development mode it will not work because it's going to be served over localhost and so what we need to do here is to make this initializer dynamic based on the environment there's a few ways of doing it the easiest way is by just having a check here so i'm going to say if rails.m is equal to production then i want to use this initializer if not then I want to simply remove the domain. So I'm just going to remove everything after the key and then type end. So the issue here is if you have that domain listed, then the browser is actually going to expect that the cookie is going to be set from that domain. So that is not going to work because when we're building this locally, we're not going to be on that domain. We're going to be on localhost. And so that would cause a, an issue, especially depending on the type of browser you're working with. So that's the last item that you need to implement in the Rails application so that it can be served up locally or on the production environment, whatever you're hosting it on, and those cookies can be set either way. So with all of this set, over the next few guides, we're going to build out a React application that has the ability to register individuals, to sign users in, to sign out, and to also check to see if a user is signed in or not.